Wow, right? Thank you so much, Ray. Amazing, amazing. I was so glad to hear that you were singing today and you brought beautiful Lori with you. We go back to the agape days. So, so awesome. So awesome. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Seal Beach. How are you this beautiful Sunday morning? Yes. Good. So excited to be here after the first Sunday after our vote, right? That's a big day um, last week. And we're just, you know, taking one day at a time here as we walk through this transition together. And it's a beautiful opportunity, this, this, this combining, you know, I believe our souls call forth these um, opportunities in our life. And the coming together of our centers, I feel like our souls have called this forth through us as a way for us to grow. We are growing, not just as a center, but individually, are we not? As we have learned to... Um, work with each other, people that we have never met before. We're bringing together two centers with people that we hadn't met before. That's kind of a big deal. That calls forth a lot from our soul and some growth. Yes, has there been any growth going on? <laughs> yes, <laughs> good. You're in the right place. So I was driving down the street yesterday and I saw this car and it had a license plate. It said 4WD, so like four-wheel drive path. And I thought, yeah, I got that. Sometimes I feel, don't you feel like you're on a four-wheel drive path? Like you're like, like just hanging on and the bumpy road and then you get the smooth road. And I thought, oh, that was, a, that was a message for me to share with you today. That, you know, sometimes it might feel like we're on a four-wheel drive road. But that we are fully equipped to handle it. That's what I really want you to know, that is we are fully equipped to handle it. So, you know, sometimes we ask for spiritual growth, right? Who, you know, we come, I think, to these centers, to Centers for Spiritual Living, because we want to grow. We want to take personal responsibility, and we want to be, um, you know, just a higher consciousness. But sometimes we don't want the uncomfortableness that comes with it. We, we like the kumbaya part of spirituality, right? Yes. Yes, we love it. Let's hold hands and sing kumbaya. Yes. <laughs> But then if someone upsets us, <laughs> now what do we do, you know? Well, what do we do? Ah, you know, I have this feeling inside of me. I'm angry or I'm upset or I'm jealous or I'm insecure, whatever the human part of us that starts to show up when we um, are born, really, when we're alive, when we're breathing air um, and coming in community. You know, those things happen. And so that's what's beautiful about being in a spiritual community is that we get to grow. And vulnerability is the topic to get today. Today our topic is about the power of vulnerability. And at first you don't think vulnerability is a, as a power, like as a superpower, right? It's like, it's like raw and scary sometimes to be vulnerable because we're not taught. We're not taught that it's okay to be vulnerable. But... And, and to embrace the parts of us that do come up, the, our humanness, those emotions that come up, to embrace those. And that's very vulnerable. And what I'm finding through my spiritual practices and daily living is that vulnerability, um, Brene Brown tells us that vulnerability is the place of creativity and innovation, which is true when you're dealing with the exterior world of, and life. But what I have found is that vulnerability is the birthing place for peace and love. Peace and love. And how is that so? How is that so? Well, because when we're talking about, there's two, I feel, two forms of vulnerability. One is I can be vulnerable with you, sharing my soul, sharing like how I'm feeling. And then there's an internal vulnerability where I begin to come to terms with them, some truths about myself. And instead of um, just letting them go, like, oh, um, I'm, I'm feeling angry, I'm just going to let that go, you know. But instead, looking at it and having compassion for myself, for, the, for that feeling that I might call a shadow or a dark feeling or a negative emotion or whatever stuff we put on it, what it is, it's just really, it's a pathway. It's a pathway to love. Because when I can acknowledge it, first step is acknowledging it. Oh my gosh, I just had something triggered me. Something somebody said or something someone did 
brought up a nervous system reaction in me. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Could you feel that? Yeah, so you, feel, you actually have a physiologic change in your body when you are quote unquote triggered that your whole nervous system responds, responds. And like Travis said, we forget. We forget who we are in that moment. All of a sudden we become someone very different, yes? <laughs> Like, who is that person? My God. So, and they keep coming back. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, so the, the key, I call it the holy moment. The holy moment when we can go from forgetting to remembering. There's that moment where we were acting unconsciously, maybe speaking unconsciously, maybe thinking unconsciously, whatever it is, it's unconscious. And we have the ability to bridge it. It could be a breath. It could be, uh, I'm just grateful for whatever it is because it brings us back to remembering of who we are. And that's when we can start, that's when the acceptance, if you will, of what's happening inside of me. Because when we just cast it away and say, oh, I'm just gonna let this go, it's still there. It's still there, it doesn't go away. But when we can accept the shadow part of us, the part of us that we don't want anybody else to see, right? And, and accept that that's okay, that came with me on this journey, this, this time, this lifetime around. That's, if we know and accept, you know, in the first step of spiritual mind treatment, we know and accept there is only one God, right? God is all there is, and God is everywhere in its entirety all the time. That is a truth. And if that is true, then God is in our shadow as well. God is in the emotions that we're having. God is in our overreaction. God is in our, um, God is everywhere in its entirety. So there's a, there's a song. I mean, it must be because Ray and Laura are here. It's Ricky Byers Beckwith song, and it's called Everywhere I Am. And in that song, it says, I am in the darkness. I am in the light. See me if you can. Everywhere I am. So God is in the darkness. God is in the light. God is everywhere. And he's ask, God's asking us to see me if you can. Because everywhere I am. So when you, so when, you when I, when we are having those reactivity moments, if we, when we can remember, ah, oh, God is in my darkness too. Let me just breathe here and accept, oh, I'm angry right now. This is, this is just a part of who I am. Can I love that part of me that is angry? Mm. Can I? Can I love that reactivity? Can I love wherever it came from? Who knows where it came from, right? We, we're spiritual beings on a journey. Could be for ancestral. We don't know where that reaction came from. Can I love myself in my anger? Can I love myself in my jealousy, in my insecurity? How can, how can I embrace that? And that's what it means to be vulnerable with yourself. And what happens? How do we initiate change? The first step to a change is acceptance, right? We want to change ourselves. So one, the greatest step to changing ourselves is to accept ourselves as is. Whew, how does that feel? Hmm? Who's our biggest judge? Who judges us the most? Ourselves. Ourselves. How can we accept the judge? Mm. How can we accept the judge within ourselves, knowing that it is all God, and love that part of us that's judgmental? Mm. Because when we can do that, then we can offer that out into the world. I can be more accepting of you when you're being judgmental. I can be more loving of you when you're in your anger. I can hold that space for you because I hold it for myself. Because I understand the multi-layeredness multi of myself. And that with, even within all of that, I, I remember who I am. I remember that I am 
connected to the one and only source that, that is everywhere present in its entirety and operating through me and as me. That's I can remember. That's the pathway to remembering who we are, is through that acceptance and then through that love. Okay, who I can love myself even though I see this part of me that I might not like and if I'm working on the healing of it or whatever that might be, but still saying, okay, I'm human. I'm just going to love myself right here in this moment. Take a deep breath. If I need to restore integrity with anyone, you know, do the actions. Do the right actions. And so, you know, I, I'm telling the story. I know Pam is here in the room, and I'm just going to tell the story because we, Pam and I were having a conversation a few weeks ago, and something in me got triggered. Something that has nothing to do with Pam. It was me and my stuff. I, got, I felt myself get defensive, I, I felt my body get tight, and it was, I was getting, um, I had um, uh, protective of namaste. I saw myself getting protective of namaste, right? We're, built, we're bringing two communities together. I think that probably is a natural instinct uh, if you've been a part of a community. And so I noticed that, and I'm like, oh my God. I'm, and all this is going on inside of me, and Pam doesn't have an idea. Pam doesn't know any of this is going on, right? Isn't that true? You could be standing in front of somebody smiling and you got this whole dialogue going on inside. You're like, if you only knew. <laughs> and so, you know, I got to observe it and notice it. And I'm like, oh my God, look at that. I just like got so reactive and protective. And what I noted, what I learned about that is it just showed me how much I love Namaste. You know, just showed me how much I love Namaste, and I'm falling in love with Seal Beach. Yes, yes. And so that, I'm, and I'm sure those here at Seal Beach have the same love for your center, right? And so as a mama bear, you know, we, it just comes up naturally. So it just noticed it and observed it and had compassion for myself because that, that was just my love expressing in, in a reactive way. <laughs> But the bottom core of it was, was love. And so from there, I could, I could move forward. I had a short conversation with Pam about it. We laughed about it, you know, and, and, and then we can move on. And so as we take, uh, we take this practice, this is a practice. It is a practice that we take baby steps to, to learn and to grow into. Because what vulnerability does is vulnerability, it shows us what we're afraid of. The areas where we don't want to be vulnerable, those are the areas the fear comes up. But what we are afraid of shows us our pathway to liberation. When we can walk through what we're afraid of with our breath, with our practice, with love and compassion for ourselves, Ooh, we free ourselves. We free ourselves from the constrictions of what that used to bring to us. Any constriction or reactivity, of when, as we walk through it, we, we sometimes want to go like the side route, really, or make a U-turn, right? Instead of going right through it. But what happens Ooh, if we walk through it together? Together. We're walking through this transition together, are we not? And it's, has it been scary at times? Like, I don't know what's happening. What do you mean we can't check any boxes? What do you mean I can't, we can't make any decisions yet? What do you mean we can't do this in one week? You know, all of, this, all of these things that tell us, you know, we want to get this done right away. That brings up our stuff. And so we get to breathe. We get to laugh at ourselves. Ah, another spiritual practice. Laugh at ourselves. When we, get to, when, we see, when we see that side of ourselves that wants to grasp onto familiarity, right? We just laugh at ourselves because that we're, we're just, why don't we, instead of grasping onto familiarity, grasp onto God? That's our security. That's what, that's what brings us security in life is grasping onto God and knowing that the rest will work itself out. Yes, is that, is, that, uh, is that something you think we can bring to our practice? Grasping onto God and knowing that that which we try to grasp on into life is conditional. It's temporary. But God is, is always present everywhere in its entirety. And, you know, infinity and beyond. It's our security. It's our security blanket. So when we're looking for security, we go within. 
and go within and do our practices and find that spiritual um, energy, soul within you to connect with. And that's where the answers will come from within. So, um, you know, <laughs> as we, if when we remember, when we remember that God is in our heart, God is everywhere. God is in our soul. God is in our breath. As I grow old, God is my lover. God's my best friend. God's in my soul. Does that sound like a guru, Rod Stewart? <laughs> why don't we, why don't you, why don't, let's sing that together, because that's really important. God's in my heart. God's in my soul. God's in my breath as I grow old. God is my lover. God's my best friend. God's in my soul. Yes, yes, yes. So if you're afraid, sing that song. Remind yourself where God is. Who right here. Soften, lighten, lighten up. Enlightenment, lighten up. Yes, light and light means lighten up. As we walk together, find that place within you that can that judgmental place that whether you're judging yourself or judging another, find that place within you that can accept, okay, there I go again. There's Veronica. There she goes again. Take a breath and love, okay. I love and accept the part of me that is judging right now. And that's how the energy shifts. Then you might have a little bit of a, ha, there she goes again, a little bit of lightness to it. And then we can move on. And another thing I want to say about, about vulnerability is it important, important to have boundaries with your vulnerability. Vulnerability doesn't mean you get to be a doormat. Vulnerability is just that you're open and receptive. And the boundaries are, are set in place like scaffolding. Boundaries just show us what's important to us. They're just signposts that show us. So if we have those boundaries in those container, that container, it holds us in, in a place where we can be vulnerable. When we don't have those boundaries, the vulnerability can feel very unsafe. So you know what's important to you, your values, Right? What's important to you? Just like we've established as centers in our exploration, you know, we have the values of safety and extraordinary respect, compassion, and accountability. Those are the values that we are that we brought together as two communities. And so when we have our values, those are our boundaries that tell us what direction or what decision to make. You know, so I thought about these four values of compassion, first compassion. How do we have compassion for ourselves? For safety, how do we do what needs to be done to keep, make us feel safe? And remember, do not mistake safety with comfortability. You know, comfor comfortable is, comfor when you're comfortable, you're not growing. Sometimes we have to grow and it's uncomfortable. So safety is what is safe for you, but not necessarily being comfortable. Accountability. How are we keeping our word? What are we doing? Are we doing what we say we're going to do to ourselves? To ourselves. That's the biggest, right? How many of you put things in your calendar for things that you have to do for others, but you don't put things in your calendar for yourself? So be true to yourself and be accountable to what's important to you. An extraordinary respect or Value of extraordinary, I love that value of extraordinary respect for self. How do I live with this extraordinary respect for myself? Yes, so we can take these values that we have from our exploration and apply them to ourselves. And that creates a vulnerability with self. Yes, I say amen to that. Yes, can I get an amen to that? Yes, yes, all right. All right, so the last thing I want to offer is a generosity. And we've spoken, and Reverend John used to speak about this, about generosity. He said of intentions, I like the word generosity of listening. Because when you're listening to someone else, remembering who they are, that they too are, 
are, have a, a connection, a soulful. God is in their heart. God is in their soul. God is in their breath. And you listen to them from that place. So that creates vulnerability between you two, between the two. Brene Brown says, I will never know for sure if someone is doing the best that they can. How can we really know that someone is doing the best that they can? But when I believe they are, my life works better. My life works better. So if we can listen to people from that God space, uh, from the highest of consciousness of who they are, knowing that just as they're human and they're going to make mistakes just as we are, we are listening to them from a higher consciousness, and your life works out better. So we're going to take that on as additionally as a practice. I'm giving you guys some homework, okay? You got that? Got some homework here. We're going to practice vulnerability with self, and we're going to practice generous listening of others. All right. So I just want to remember that we are all in this together. And as we love and support each other, um, think the best and the highest of each other, we can move mountains. We can move mountains, and we will be a different person as a result of that. We will be a different person as a result of this journey that we're going on together because it's pulling forth through us what our soul's been asking for. We wouldn't be here if we didn't ask for whatever's coming through us right now as a result of these two communities coming forth. We wouldn't be here if we didn't ask for this next step in spiritual growth. So as we're growing as a community, we're growing as an individual. You can't do one and not the other. So take a moment to thank your soul. Thank you, soul, for bringing me here so I can grow into the next highest expression of myself. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I accept this right now, and so it is, and so it is. Yes, yes, woo, yes. <laughs> and then I'm going, to, I'm going to go into prayer as we go within. Going into this place, this holy place that resides within each and every one right here and right now. Hmm, going into the secret place, the secret place of the Most High that resides within each and every one of us. I know and accept that as we grow together, we grow in love. As we grow together, we grow our faith as we let go from the clinging of the conditions and surrender to the Holy Spirit within. I accept this journey for all as a journey of love, growth, peace, fun, and joy. If I didn't say joy, I'm going to say it again, and joy. I release this out into the law that only says yes. I seal it with an absolute knowingness that it is done, it is done, it is done. And from our soul place, that place within, we all say together, and so it is. Amen. Thank you.